All right, Brick Maniacs, it's time for another episode of Brick Mania TV. All right, Cody, you have the F-15E I do. Eagle, Strike you, Eagle. Yay, there you go. Nice. You got it right. I did. Okay, cool. <laughs> Tell us a little, let's start off with the history on this crazy, first of all, look at this model. This thing is awesome. Let's just take a moment to just Let's look. take a moment to take this, take this all in <laughs> in, its, in its glory right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's start off with the history of this thing. So the history of this thing, um, the Air Force was in desperate need of a somewhat decent aircraft and they got more than what they want. More than what they bargained for. <laughs> with the F-15. Um, failures in Vietnam with the F-4 Phantom. Mm -hmm. um, it was a horrible dogfighter, the F-4 Phantom. They relied on just missiles that didn't even have a backup gun. Right. So if you fire all your missiles, you better get out of there because mm -hmm. you got nothing else to defend yourself with. <laughs> so, um, and at the height of the Cold War, we're racing with the Russians to come up with a good aircraft to compete with all their MiGs. They were coming out with really, the Russians were coming out with really good MiGs. Uh, so uh, the Air Force recruited the help of a pilot that dedicated his life to dogfighting, and um, he worked with them to develop the F-15. So <laughs> when they asked him for help, and he was looking at blueprints, and he said, "Well, I don't know anything about designing airplanes, but..." I could screw up and do a better job than what you guys are doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, he spent a lot of time working in development because um, one of the other drawbacks of the F-4 Phantom was the canopy you couldn't see behind you. And they relied so much on their radar um, being in front of their face, constantly looking down for the enemy rather than looking around for the enemy, um, just to rely on their missiles to do their fighting for them. So they developed a much better canopy for the F-15. It's much more of a dogfighter. Uh, the F-15 is capable of reaching the height of Mount Everest in under 60 seconds. That's nuts. And it has <laughs> defended its title eight times against the MiGs in a climbing race. Cool, cool. This, yeah, it's a crazy airplane. It's kind yeah. of a, uh, maybe like return to basics, like let's get the fighting down first before you rely on technology, right? But yep. this thing is still has like tons it of has technology. It has awesome technology. Yeah. And one thing um, it has is a HUD a he or a heads up display. So pilots no longer have to look down at their instruments to know the information that their aircraft is telling them. Right. Um, it's projected on the canopy or on the windshield. Cool. Um, so that's an awesome feature. Pilots love that feature. It keeps you looking around. You can see where the enemy is and see all your information on the screen, where to hit them. You can select your missiles. You don't have to look down anywhere. Um, if you memorize the controls on your control stick, you can switch weapons and tells you which weapons you've got selected. Cool. So yeah, very technologically advanced. Um, and it's very durable and very rugged. Right. Um, the United States, along with um, Israel, are the only two countries that have F-15s. Right. So when the F-15s came on the scene in Israel and pilots were testing them, uh, one pilot had an engagement with an enemy fighter and they were uh, belly to belly and they couldn't see each other and they had a minor collision and the, the Israeli pilot's F-15 was barrel rolling out of control and so he was telling his co-pilot to bail out um, but just before he made the decision made the call to actually bail out he jammed his thrusters and which is just kind of went against all instincts yeah. and, um, so he increased his speed and was able to slow his barrel roll down enough to gain, regain control. That's crazy. Had his wingman look at the aircraft to inspect the damage on it, and a bunch of fuel was pouring out of the side. Yeah. Um, and but he still can. He's like, I, I see a lot of fuel, but I don't know where the damage is. Right. Uh, for sure. So he's going so fast when he landed on the airstrip, he lowered his cable because there was a, or he lowered his hook um, for the cable on the airstrip. Right because he was coming at such a fast speed and then he caught that cable hoping to slow it down but then it just ripped off the airplane. Yeah. Um, he was able to stop within 20 feet of hitting the barriers and so excited just, you know, just to land right. this damaged airplane and reaches around to shake his co-pilot's hand and then that's when he got a first glimpse of the damage <laughs> yeah. to the aircraft and he was missing his right wing. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've heard that, that's crazy, yeah. yeah. Missing his right wing entirely. That's crazy. So McDonnell Douglas, the producer of the F-15, 
uh, came to Israel to inspect and just find out how the heck this was even possible. Yeah. And they determined that F-15 doesn't necessarily need wings to fly. <laughs> 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 it's got enough power to fly without it because it's such a you know rectangular design. Yeah. It's, it's pretty flat um, even without the wings. Just the uh, yeah. I, he I heard about that story. Like even people that didn't see it land in person, they they uh, they assumed that there was just a big runway accident. Like, there's yeah. no way that that thing would have like right. made that landing. Yeah. But just the sheer speed coming in. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's a huge undersurface area to yeah. create a lot of lift. So. Yeah, there's a lot of surface, a lot of lift yeah. there. Uh, a lot of power. Yeah. A lot of power in those engines. Um, so one thing that makes the F-15 different from, or the F-15E from uh, other variants is there is a conformal um, fuel tank on the side of mm -hmm. the, on the side of the intakes. Um, that's kind of what's represented here. It's kind of bumped out. Uh, in my initial, development of the first prototype, I just thought it was just part of the fuselage. And so I had built these, the opening to the intakes, um, rigid and straight across. Because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd only just seen pictures at that point, I didn't watch any videos. And I didn't notice until Dan brought it up, he said, aren't those like variable pitch intakes? And right. I watched the video and realized, oh yeah, they are. So they're open before takeoff, they start the engines and then they pitch down the intakes to reduce the amount of airflow getting into the engine. So just initially they want to get more air into there, but once yeah. you're at speed, you're obviously getting a lot more. Yeah, and even before they take off, they, they mm -hmm. close them once the engines are on. Um, yeah, so the F-15E needs a lot of fuel. It, it was developed as um, more of a bomber variant um, than other Eagles, uh, which kind of went against what people wanted developed at the time, but it ended up being very useful, especially during Desert Storm. Um, the F-15. Hashtag e. Desert Storm Bricks. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> carried, uh, Keep going. The F-15E carried a um, huge bomb load. Um, what I built on here um, was just a general purpose bomb loadout, and it's got 12 MK-82 bombs and four sidewinders, um, just for air defense if right. they were to come in with any bogeys. Um, so the initial um, attack for Desert Storm. Uh, they had three things that they wanted to accomplish with um, the F-15s. One was to establish air superiority, to destroy targets on the ground so the military can move in on the ground, the, right. the army. And three was to destroy Scud missile sites um, so they can, so they don't get attacked by Scud um, or uh, biological and uh, weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. So they flew at night in the initial attack, and I think it was 24, in this very specific um, insignia we have on here. That squadron, the 335th squadron, was the first to fly the initial attack. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, so it's an interesting history on the 335th squadron. It's been around since World War II, and that squadron was used um, for American volunteer pilots to go over and fly with the RAF. So they haven't changed their insignia since then. Oh, cool. This, uh, the chief head. That's kind of a Legoized version of it. Yeah, it's a Legoized version of that. Okay. So, the, and you know, with the tail stripes that incorporates the same insignia there. Um, and then we replace the insignia on the back here with the Brickmania logo. Yeah. Just to kind of keep things. So it's inspired by. It's inspired by, yeah. But cool. <laughs> so. Well, um, yeah, any other I guess moving on to the model itself, it's where do we begin on this thing? Yeah, boy, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep this. Let's keep this short. Uh, yeah, no, it's, no, <laughs> it's real hard to keep things short with such a large. Things huge. It's awesome. Yeah, and it's, I mean it's America's most successful aircraft. So, so yeah, Canopy opens. I was so excited to come up with this. Yeah, design. you were working on that for a while. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the first things I started with on the nose, aside from getting the nose right, was yep. getting a canopy that works, because LEGO doesn't really have good canopy pieces. You can either turn this around, but that just looks kind of goofy and it wouldn't open right. as one solid piece. So I used a, a half cylinder yep. um, transclear piece to build that in. So you can fit a guy here and a guy here. And we did incorporate, I don't know if you can really get that on the camera, you yeah, uh, get a, a little sticker, sticker pack here. for this thing. It's so. the uh, it's the HUD yep. uh, heads up display sticker on the front there, and there's some other stickers inside the canopy, just random buttons, very very Legoized yeah. sticker buttons that you've developed. Inspired by the real thing, but you know it's Lego, so yeah, 
it's got its own aesthetic. So. Um, yeah, and intakes move up and down. Yep. Uh, we've got flaps and ailerons that move. They oh. just move. Get these guys out of here. And the rudder is also move. nice. Rudder's moving in out. That's when you want to stop abruptly midair, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, turn them opposite directions of each other? Well, if you want to stop, there's also an air brake. Oh, yeah, top. air brake. That's what, yeah, air brake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hidden under the air brake. Yeah, um, so you might notice that little light in there. So what do we got going on? We're in development with brick stuff, yep. lights. Um, and we got a sweet feature in the back here that if you turn this knob on a dimmer switch, the afterburners light up. Nice. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, do we have a run time on that? How long this battery lasts in here? So there's no wires going into it, it's all internal. Yeah, it, um, so it includes a coin cell battery. Yep. One battery that is, it's already installed mm -hmm. on the board itself. And you can obviously change it in and out um, yeah. if your battery goes dead. And I think it's 48 hours of straight run time. Wow, cool. Um, so yeah, if you want to have this like on display somewhere. Yeah, or I guess I can just leave it on, why not? Why not? Save the battery, man. Save the battery, I don't have to. 48 hours. 40 hours of direct run time. Well, we left it on for two days by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so this board comes with four ports. So you can buy additional brick stuff lights if you want um, insignia on the on the wingtips or up here or even something in the cockpit. And cool. Um, and then there's also an additional uh, power source that you can hook up like a Lego battery with a, a cable that has a USB adapter on okay. it. And you can plug it in here, right there. So there's a lot of options, it's pretty flexible. Yeah, there's options cool. for power. And then this switch here is what controls that power. So down cool. is the battery, and the middle is off. And the uh, the dial switch uh, in the back, if you turn it all the way down, it acts like an off switch, but it still draws a little bit of power because of that green light. Okay. So yep. if you want totally off to draw no power, just flip it to the cool. middle, flip it all the way forward. If you want the USB adapter, cool. Uh, sold separately. Sold separately. All right, what else? Moving around this thing? Yeah, moving around this thing. Um, I guess we got landing gear. Landing gear, nice. Do you want to take a landing gear? Landing oh, funny. gear. I've never heard that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> landing well, gear. So aside from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, look at that. Holding it up by one hand. No, no, that, yeah, oh, you're just sorry. holding it. You know? Yeah. So it's it's very swooshable That's if cool. your hands are strong enough because this is almost three and a half pounds I it's think heavy. worth of Lego. Um, so, so it is in fact swooshable. It is in fact swooshable. Although this one I don't think you can pick up from the wings, <laughs> from the wing tips, just because it's so heavy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the intakes are all the way open from the back, uh, or from the front all the way to the back, so yeah. you can see the beginning of the turbines. Um, and maybe we'll have a like a behind the scenes yeah. kind of footage of that. Of, you can light that up and you can actually see through the front of it. Yeah, you can see all so the way to the... Kind of cool. All the way to the beginning of the turbines. We'll post up a picture or something later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so landing gear, I guess I'll do that. Maybe I'll maybe we'll do it on this camera. I don't know how much you'll be able to see from where you are. So it's mostly completely hidden. I, I tried my best. Uh, and it was really hard to get a door that opens all the way to the side like this. So I put a couple joints in there. So the front landing gear pops right down. And then that closes and up again. And closes up again, just like the real thing. Nice. And that holds it in place as well. Or is it just kind no, of balanced it, it like just, that? No, okay, it yeah. just closes like that. And there's these other flaps that you open first. You can kind of get your finger on this plate here, your thumb on there. It takes a little bit of finagling, but not bad. Yeah, I don't think it's too bad. At least for my fingers, anyways. Um, pull landing gear out and then turn it to the side. That's the only way to get it strong enough to support the right. weight of this airplane. And then you can you bend it back into place. Close it back into place. Nice. And do the same thing on this side. Don't break it, don't break it. It's strong. You get one shot. We're not taping this again. <laughs> this is why we include stands. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the option. That's not so. why, but. I mean, it is cool that you have the landing gears fully enclosed and they function like just like they would in real life. So. Yeah, mostly like they would in mostly. real life. Um, so. Yeah, and then you can 
if you want to, you can kind of close closes those. back up and kind of close those doors. You don't really have can to flip it back over. That's just more how they look in real life. Right. Is if you have those doors partially closed like that, okay. And make sure these are rocked back all the way. And then, and it does fully support its own weight. Yep. And you can roll it back and forth a little bit, or do you got to be careful with that? Um. Jets only go forwards. <laughs> So you I can guess. push it forwards. Jets don't, they don't go, they don't go backwards? <laughs> Not unless they're pushed. Never go backwards, uh, never retreat. Yeah. So aside from all the cool. armaments I mentioned, I also did include, I think they're 660 gallon drop tanks. Um, yep. On the side, they could either be light gray or dark gray. And this is a very specific loadout um, for Desert Storm. Yeah. I think there was nine different loadouts. I chose this one just because it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's um, just 12 dumb bombs some sidewinders and then the drop tanks. And you could also put a drop tank on center line underneath the aircraft so you could have three same drop kind. tanks and then plus the conformal tanks that attach oh. to the sides of the intakes. So that'd be the same drop tank that you'd put in the middle? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they could be light gray or dark gray. Cool. So, do uh, you wanna talk about pilots? Yeah, we can move on to that. Right on, okay, so we have two pilots in this kit, uh, the same on both. And we've seen this artwork before. Actually, when's the hair you're getting released? Is that the same timing as all this? No, it's already been done. It's already been, okay, so when there's errors, okay. So <laughs> we've seen this artwork before um, on the Harrier, except those were on, um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cody. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen these pilots before um, in some fashion on uh, Yitzi's Harrier model, but those were on tan, and so now we got these guys on olive color. Um, so it's the same. It's a similar set. It's the same setup. Um, so we got the uh, G compression suit, um, and then the survival vest as well. And then something we did differently on this guy was the. Um, it's the texture printed. Um, I'm blanking on the exact name, but the uh, oxygen mask mm -hmm. um, for this guy. So that's texture printed right on the face, and we we're just you know we've never done this before. Um, so it's just something a new technique we're trying out, and so we're just curious to see what you think about it. Um, but. I think it's cool. It's I think cool. we both think it's cool. Yeah, I, I'm, li I'm liking it so far. <laughs> um, yeah, so two cool guys. Yeah, I don't know if I mean, we, we've, we've done the cigar face. That's kind of our first test for like texture printing on faces. Yeah. Um, yep. But this is kind of a bit more of a a big structure on his face, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know how to describe that. But yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. I think it's cool. So you get two of those guys in each kit. Yep. So. A pilot and a radar intercept officer. Bingo. Radar intercept officer. Oh, that's good. That that's good. Also, thing I wanted to note. Yeah. Also, thing I wanted to note. I'm good at talking. Oh, about <laughs> <laughs> also, thing I speak. <laughs> so, on the top of the stabilizers yeah. is a. Well, oh, no, I forgot the name of it. Gosh. Radar warning. Radar warning. Receiver. Receiver. So if if you get a lock on your aircraft, you know about it. Nice. And that was that's where they had that. It was right on the. Yep. That's just cool. basically just like a little antenna that would receive radar signals. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Any other? Um, <laughs> oh wait. It's what else? What else? What else? There's, there's got to be more things on this. There's ejector stickers. Yeah. There's a um, bunch of stickers. Tons of stickers all over the place. Uh, printed, 20 millimeter Gatling gun. On yeah, that's cool. So that's the uh, simulated. It's kind of like a indented spot in the in mm -hmm. the side of the fuse. Is that the fuselage, or is that yeah, part of the on the side of the intake? That's yeah. permanent on the side of there, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah. And then there's. Uh, so it's a 20 millimeter gun. The shells pop out of here or out of here. Or yeah. Something. Cool. Yeah, 20 millimeter Gatling gun. Um, just as a backup. Right on. Yeah. Uh, stickers, stickers, stickers. I think that's it, man. So no, there's a. No, this, this printed tile. Here yeah, go. there's the printed tile that tells you all the information for your exclusive kit. Exclusive. Exclusive. Ultimate. What are we calling this line of kits? The Ultimate Collector Series? No. I don't know what they're called. Master builder, series. master master <laughs> kit or something. <laughs> I thought we had a name for it. Whatever. Yeah, it's possible. <clears throat> uh, so we included as many no step stick no step stickers as we could. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all over the place. This is probably like over the place. Half as many as there there are in the actual um, in the actual jet. But no step stickers. Maybe. No step. There. there Don't step there. 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 there and there's there, these there, no there, push there. like honeycomb looking stickers. Yeah, it took us a while to kind of figure that one out. Yeah, like what is like, that? I don't know what that says. Just no push. <laughs> no push. Don't push it. No push. Don't push it. Yeah. All right, Cody. I think we're good. Don't I think push it. I think we've rambled Don't push it, Cody. All right, so that is the F-15E Strike Eagle. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we got one more little mini release. Cody, talk about this little guy. 
I don't know anything, I don't know anything about it. It's a Stewart, right? Stewart, right? <laughs> yeah. This is the M3 Stewart light tank. And there's a secret card that goes with it that I'm not supposed to show people for some reason. I don't oh, know why. Now they're going to pause it and they're, they're going to pause it they're going to look it. at it and copy it and sell it in China. And then we won't be able to make a job. Cody's going to get fired. I'm not going to get fired, but Cody will. Why? I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cody. It was nice working with you while you worked here. Yeah. We've been fired before. Yeah, we have been fired before. We're hired again, though. So that is the episode. For more information, check out brickmania.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. And hashtag Desert Storm hashtag Bricks. Desert Storm Bricks. All right. Double That's dab. It. That's it. No, 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 no. We're not. No, no. We broke the internet last time.